It is January 3rd, and it's supposed to be 60 degrees today. What am I supposed to do with that? So now that we have the blog newsletter on Substack, I do feel a little more comfortable branching out to other subjects on this channel. One of the things that I want to talk about on this channel is pop culture, because I love pop culture. And when I say that, I don't mean the gossipy side. I mean books, because now, I, because I feel like books have had such a popular resurgence. Um, television shows that I'm watching, just the things that I'm doing in my life, pretty much. Um, just vlogging my life. But I do want to talk more about books. That is something that I have always wanted to do on YouTube. In the last video, I talked to you about my newsletter slash blog, my Substack that um, I've created. And uh, I'm excited because I feel like I can kind of expand on the whole idea of, you know, it's funny because we call it soft life. And it's weird because out there in the world, in the internet, soft life has is starting to take on a little bit of a different connotation people who are against it, because there are people who are against it, if you didn't know. People who are against it really are trying to call it something else. There, are, Whenever there's a movement or some sort of aesthetic that comes along, there are always gonna be people who have a problem with it. People have a problem with stay-at-home moms and wives. They have a problem with women who want a more leisurely life, a softer life. They have a problem with women who decide that they wanna be in a relationship and that they don't mind letting their spouse take the lead. Um, and so there is some back and forth going on. You know, I don't know if most people know this, but there is some back and forth going on on the internet that's a little disheartening. One, because I think people should just let people do what they wanna do. And two, that is um, also disappointing because there are really people out there who don't believe that women um, and in particular, women of color, they don't believe that we can be soft and leisurely and luxurious. Um, and that just makes me so sad. Uh, I am not necessarily someone who's like, go out there and buy a bunch of handbags and spend all your money on trips. That is a certain type of luxury. I dabble in that. I do dabble in that quite a lot sometimes. But... I'm more of a slow living type of person, a mindfulness type of person, a person who understands that hustling hard is not gonna do anything but put me in an early grave. And I'm not here for that because I've watched my mother and her sisters and even my own sister, not that they hustled so hard, but they did work a lot. And a lot of the times it was for other people. And a lot of the times it was, you know, to their detriment. Um, because they were always putting everyone else first, including jobs and careers. And not that there's anything wrong with that if you love what you do, but if you don't, if you are in conflict with, with what you're doing outside of your life, if it doesn't match up with you, you're always going to be at cross purposes. And to me, that's just a recipe for stress and it's a recipe for drama and it's a recipe for disaster. And oftentimes when we're taking care of home and we're taking care of family and we're taking care of jobs and we're taking care of all these other things, we don't cultivate the things that we need to cultivate within ourselves. We don't necessarily take the best care of ourselves. I've been guilty of it. Um, so that's what I mean when I say I want to live more intentional. And my Substack, my newsletter, um, that is the place where I will expound upon those principles. I feel like it's a lot easier to do it in written form for me. It'll be a lot easier to, um, if, if I decide to start a podcast, that will be a wonderful thing over there. Um, and that's not to say that I'm not going to still talk about those things here, but I think this channel will be more of an extension of that platform as opposed to, um, or they'll be companions to each other. But I said all that to say, um, one of the things that I really want to do, and while I talk about this, I'm going to do my morning skincare routine because if I don't do anything else routinely, I take care of my skin. I'm obsessed with my skin because I had acne for so many years, like from the time I was maybe 11, um, all through middle school. It kind of started to go away in high school, but of course I had the occasional breakout. 
and then um, it went away for a long time and came back in my 30s and now I have the skin that I have and this is due diligence so while I talk to you about what I want to say next I'm gonna do my due diligence <laughs> um, I am trying to build a morning routine. You know this, you know this about me. You know that I've been trying to build a morning routine for a while and uh, I have not yet been successful. I just adjusted my phone because I film on my phone. I have not been successful yet with an overarching morning routine, but this, doing my skincare, this is always a staple, no matter what, no matter where I am, morning and night. So what I was saying before I totally diverged there, um, was that because I have now the Substack platform and I can offer some written materials, you know, you can get things in your inbox. I can also post a video there. Um, I will, there may at some point be a time where I have a membership fee there. It would be like maybe three to $5 a month um, for bonus things. Like you can go over there and you can see like the stuff that's open to the public. But for those of you who want, you know, a little more. I plan on offering more information. And it's it's not just about soft living, but it's also just about you being able to curate your experience um, on the internet with some tips from me. I will provide what I see around the world and things that I think are wonderful. And then you can use that as a jumping off point. And also hopefully we can build a community as well. Um, I'm gonna put a little more of this. This is my SK2. I am obsessed with SK2. This is probably like my fourth bottle of this. I have been using it for years and it works. And I'm very generous with it because it hydrates your skin. It has healing properties. And this is not a skincare video, so I will go into this on another video. But that's kind of what I was leading up to. I wanna be able to talk about other things like my skincare routine and and take you you know, do do some more vlogs and um, take you with me when I go to cool places. And one of the big things that I wanna talk about, and I've had a couple of people comment, I definitely wanna talk about more books. I want to dabble more into the booktube space. And I feel like I can do all that here and still bring you guys great content. I am now putting the Beauty Pie Matrixel on my face. I have it on good authority that Matrixel is very good for aging skin. This is the Matrixel. It's, I'm using the Beauty Pie. It's the Super Drops Beauty Pie. Let me see if I can. <laughs> Beauty Pie is a subscription, not a subscription service, a membership service where you pay a fee for the year and um, you get an incredible discount on their products. And they pride themselves on making products that we are we use normally, you know, the the big products that we use, the, the moisturizers and the different um, serums and essences and all those things. They make them at a fraction of the price. So, you know, whereas um, another company who makes the Matrixel may charge you 30 or $40 for this bottle. At Beauty Pie, you can get it for like 15 or 12, something like that. I am still testing out the Beauty Pie products on me. I've had them now for a couple of weeks during the Christmas um, holiday. And uh, so far, the Super Drops are <laughs> wonderful. I'm following this up with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. Um, and I like this cream. It's daytime right now. I don't know if I'm going anywhere, but this is a nice thick cream. So I'm just gonna put this on right now. If I decide to go somewhere, then I will follow this up with sunscreen and um, and my makeup, of course. But that's what I'm doing. So I said that I want to dabble more into the book space and really, you know, just talk about more things that most people who have a YouTube channel talk about. You know, I wanna talk about my capsule wardrobe and um, you know, oh my God, this cream. <laughs> I really, the jury for me was still out on the Charlotte Tilbury cream, I'll be honest. Like I've had it, I've had samples of it and I've liked it, but I never really used my samples. Like I would, like if I needed to grab some moisturizer I would put it on you know and I really wouldn't think very much of it but doing it now and I don't know if they reformulated it or what but the cream is 
lovely. It is beautiful and soft. It reminds me of La Mer. Um, it is just beautiful and soft. Oh my goodness, it feels really good. And this is not the thickest one. There apparently is a night cream too, which I think I might try. Put a little bit more on my neck area and down <laughs> my chest. Um, but yeah, I wanna talk to you guys more about, you know, things that I'm doing and reading and, and uh, a lot about what I'm reading because I'm, I've been reading a lot. It's something that I've just really gotten back into and I'm really enjoying it. I'm a huge booktube fan, but you know, I didn't wanna just start a separate booktube channel. So I feel like now I kind of have the opportunity to do a little bit more of that. Like when I bring you a video now, because I have the other platform that I'm working on, when I bring you a video now, I can actually talk or speak to things that I'm actually doing, um, things that go along with my soft or intentional life. Um, I can talk more about the things as opposed to the thing, if that makes sense. So what I mean by that is I can tell you the products that I use to make my skin feel more luxurious because that's a very luxury, soft living thing to do. I can talk to you about how I'm decorating my house. I can talk to you about all of those things and books are included. Um, so I may do some book vlogs, some reading. I may do some reading vlogs. I definitely will talk a lot about um, books that I'm going to read, books that, or books that I want to read, <laughs> books that I have read, all of those things. I definitely see that going forward. And I guess what we're really doing is laying the groundwork. The other thing is too, last night I went down a rabbit hole and I discovered um, using my bullet journal as a book journal. Now I know that people do that and I, I've known that for years, but it wasn't something that I ever really had time to do or that I ever really wanted to do because um, I just wasn't reading all that much. But now I am, now I am reading more and I wanna retain what I read and I feel like the things that I um, consume, the, the media that I consume, not just the books, but movies, like I watched some wonderful shows last year that I never talked about on my channel because, you know, that wasn't what we were talking about on the channel. And they tell you, you know, stick to your niche. But I am a multifaceted person. And so I'm sure is everyone else out there and we have different interests and it's okay to talk about different things. So it's pretty much, that's what I wanted to discuss with you all. I'm gonna do one more step because like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going anywhere. I wanna do I wanna do two more steps, um, but I need to go get them, so I'll be right back. I said two, but actually there's three because there's one that I forgot. I usually do this one first. I need some eye cream. <laughs> I'm doing the whole enchilada this morning. And this is just because when the winter months come, you get very dry. At least I do. And I really like to, if I'm not leaving the house or if I'm not gonna be leaving the house for a few hours, I really like to go in with heavy moisture. Like I wanna look like a glazed donut when I'm done, pretty much. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. Also, I love doing cinematic videos for you guys and I am going to continue to do those. They do take a lot of production though. So I also feel like maybe once a week I can do some of these talking videos for you too so that at least we're talking to each other um so if you like talking videos let me know let me know in the comments you know let me know if you like videos where people are just chit-chatting and the wonderful thing about these videos is you don't have to just sit here and watch me you know you can be doing other things while I'm talking because literally all I'm doing right now is just putting on my skincare um and I will be very good and list all of the things that I'm using in the description box so that if you just want to watch me as background noise right now I'm not doing anything there's no pretty pictures there's no montages because honestly I haven't gone anywhere or done anything for that um but if you just want to hear the drone of my voice and hopefully get some good information in the process then um you know let me know let me know if you like the talking videos because I will definitely add more of those um so let's see, what else did I say? So the, the, the final two steps that I'm gonna do. Now I have put on my Matrixel and I have put on my SK2 as, um, 
as um, I started with my SK2, I moved on to my Matrixel, which is my serum or my treatment for this morning. Um, I put on a moisturizer. And what I like to do, and I started doing this because I use hyaluronic acid. Um, and I don't know if there's hyaluronic acid in the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, but I feel like there might be. I'll have to look up the ingredients on that to see. But typically if I use hyaluronic acid on my face, I will go in with a thermal spritz so, or some sort of spritz. It doesn't necessarily have to be thermal water. It could be rose water or whatever, but just to make sure that the hyaluronic acid is drawing the moisture from the atmosphere or from what's on top of my skin and not from what's underneath it, because then it would be pulling moisture out of my skin. That's why I hydrate it really well at the beginning. And that's really more of a habit, whether I use hyaluronic acid or not now, I just do it anyway. Um, and, and I also believe that that is really why Korean skincare, why that 10 step routine, why it works so well, because it's all about building up hydration so that you're not dehydrated. It's not, moisturizing seals in everything, but you want to hydrate your skin. So I love to put watery things on my skin. I love to seal them in with my moisturizers and my oils. Plus it just feels good to just sit here and touch my face in a good way, not you know, popping pimples or picking pimples or anything like that. So I'm gonna go in with this Avene um, Thermal Water, which I love and I try to keep on hand. I have a couple of different waters in this though because I like to miss my skin. And like I said, it's winter, it's dry. So I'm nice and wet now and you're like, but you just did all that. I know. And hopefully the Matrixel had enough time to settle in. Um, but this, and it feels so good. It just, I'm giving my skin just a nice drink um, on top of what I've already given it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take the um, La Mer Renewal Clean, Re La Mer Renewal Oil, which I am such a fan of. I love, <laughs> Pretty much La Mer anything. La Mer is worth the hype, at least for me it is. And so um, it's one of the few eye creams that I can use that doesn't make my eyes burn or itch. And I love their moisturizer. I will always have La Mer somewhere in my stash. So I'm just put a little oil in my hands and I'm just gonna press it into my face. And when I tell you, I smell this stuff and I feel like I am transported to some gorgeous hotel room in Paris. <laughs> That's what I believe, this is what I think the hotel rooms in Paris smell like. They probably don't, but you have to build your own fantasies. You have to create your own <laughs> reality. You have to be the main character <laughs> of your life. And I didn't coin that term. I didn't make that term up, but I'm sharing it with those of you who may ha have not heard it. The two things we're going to start talking about going forward is being the main character and being a little delusional. Um, And so there you just saw an example of both. I literally put the oil in my hand, put it on my face, took a whiff of it and transported myself delusionally because I'm still here <laughs> to Paris. There you go. But yes, this is, this just feels good and it feels like I've done something for myself. Um, this year, I am going to try to practice being as diligent about putting good things in my body. The things that I put on my face are very luxurious and some very pricey and beautiful and good for my skin. I want to do the same for what goes inside my body. That's what I'm trying to say. So a whole lot of information going forth. Um, on January 3rd, 2023. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's where we are. It's Tuesday. My hope is that this video will go up on Thursday, right before um, the first email newsletter goes out. I am still, like I said, it's still very wonky. So it may not be chocked full of like lots of information. You'll definitely get something really cool. I mean, I already had it outlined. So I just gotta, I just gotta set it up and push publish, which is making me very nervous. <laughs> but also too, there will be blog posts that are on the site um, and I can upload video there as well. So I'm really excited about all of that. 
and all of the information about that will be below. So exciting times. You got to see my morning skincare routine and um, we got some direction for this year. So I'm going to get back on my cinematic video game. I'm going to take you um, around and talk a little bit about books. So if that's something you're interested in, keep watching. If not, um, maybe I'll time stamp, stamp it so you can skip past that part. But I would, I would, I mean, if you're interested in books or you're just even interested in like what people are out there reading or whatever, there is so much information out there about books. And um, I really, really want to be able to share that with you too. So, you know, this will be kind of a hodgepodge of things on this channel but it's all still me, it's all still my personality, and I'm gonna try to still give you some really good stuff um, because I think that it's exciting. I'm excited to share my life and my experiences with you guys. So, all right, let's, let's look at some books. So, right now I am reading Andy Weir's Project Hail Mary. I am already, see what page I'm on, you guys. <laughs> I'm not working. Okay, I am already loving this book. And part of the reason why I'm already loving this particular book is because um, it's in Medias Rest. Like, it starts off with the narrator telling you, hey, this is happening to me right now, and I don't know what's going on. Uh, help. <laughs> That's literally what you're getting with this book. It is a sci-fi book, which is very interesting because while I love sci-fi movies, I have not read a whole lot of sci-fi books. But this one is incredibly popular. In fact, the first bookstore that I went to go buy it, they were all out. They were all sold out. They only had two copies at the bookstore that I got this one from. And honestly, I think there was only one copy because when I went up to the um, bookshelf, this was the only one left. And... You can't really find it, or I couldn't find it in my area in hardback anywhere. So um, I would love it in hardback. I would love it if the words were bigger, by the way. By the way, um, one of my subscribers asked about my glasses and I just wanted to say that like, okay, so I have prescription glasses and my prescription glasses are um, from diffeyewear.com. And I also have another pair that may have been in a video that I got from Peepers from, you know, going to get my eye exam and all that. Um, I broke a pair. I broke the arm. I'm still using them. It's these. <laughs> I'm still using them, but see the arm is missing now. Um, they have seen better days. They're also just pretty beat up. These were my glasses though. And these were the ones that I got from diffeyewear.com. I um, had the people at Peepers put my prescription in these frames, but then I sat on my glasses and broke the arm, but I have to keep these until new ones come. When I don't wanna look absolutely crazy in public, I wear these. These are my old prescription. They still work somewhat. Um, the reading portion, uh, I think needs to be a little bit stronger though. And so, these I can't, these are my emergency glasses. Both sets of glasses are the prescriptive lenses. So I have the trans, you know, the I have the reading portion on the bottom and then I can see on the top. Both sets of glasses do that. I prefer a larger space. That's why I like those bigger glasses better. Um, I think also in one of my shorts I had some sunglasses. Those were my Gucci sunglasses which I have now scratched. I am so hard on glasses, which is why I typically will just buy sunglasses from Target. Um, but I think I'm going to go ahead and get my prescription put into those glasses as well because they do a good job of that. So um, I'll have prescription sunglasses too. So I have a pair of glasses that should be coming today. And the ones that are coming today are just strictly for seeing. So I would use those for watching television or driving um, or just, you know, if my eyes are tired and I need to um, just have my glasses on just to see. They're not, however, reading glasses. I have another pair that are coming um, that will be similar to the ones that I broke. And those will have my, um, those will have the reading and the seeing prescription. <laughs> so yes, um, 
I do wear glasses. <laughs> um, and I'm fine with it. I love glasses. I think they're a wonderful accessory. I think glasses, here's a pro tip. If you don't really want to put on makeup and you don't really want to get dressed up, um, you know, having your hair done and putting on a pair of glasses is probably one of the best ways to get away with <laughs> not beating your face, <laughs> believe it or not. I mean, look at this. Like it just, you see glasses, you don't really see my, my face, even though I'm fine with going out like this, but <laughs> yeah, if I really feel like, Ooh, I, you know, look a little tired, you know, and I need to leave the house and I don't want to put makeup on. I just throw on a pair of glasses. Okay, so back to the book. What I was saying was I would love to find this in large print to make my life easier. I also do audiobooks and I also have a Kindle, which is never charged. So they are around here somewhere, but I do have Kindle. And sometimes I just read the Kindles on my phone because it's easier. You turn down the brightness on your phone and just read it there. Um, I'm probably going to start doing that more because I'll be reading more at night. I just wanted to show you guys what I'm currently reading. So that if I do do a book vlog or, a, you know, a book review or whatever, we're on the same page, you know what I'm reading. I would also imagine at some point I will put a list of books that I'm reading or want to read on the Substack as well. And as you probably would have guessed about me, um, I don't just read one book <laughs> at a time. I'm also starting this one as well stay true this is autobiographical as you can see it's a memoir it is about it is written by a taiwanese immigrant or is he japanese i <laughs> got them confused because one of the the guys is writing about himself and his friend and so one of them is japanese and one of them is taiwanese and they're they're right he's writing about what it was like to be an immigrant here and um, this story does take a dark turn. I'm not going to spoil that right now. Not that it is a spoiler. It's in the dust jacket. But I just think sometimes when you're getting ready to read a book, the less you know about it, to me, the better. You know, um, so I don't want to necessarily say what's going to happen in the book yet if you're not familiar with it. Eventually, I will talk about it because it is um, part of the story. But um, this came recommended from... The New York Times, um, wanting to say two months ago now, maybe a month ago, they did their top 10 best books of 2022. And this was on the list and I found it intriguing and wanted to check it out. So yes, Stay True by Hua Su. And it'll be interesting to learn about the immigrant experience through his eyes. So. The two books that I'm currently reading, we are. it is January 3rd. I have not gone on Goodreads yet to put my reading goals. I put 10 books last year. I read three. I actually may have read four. Um, and what's crazy is I finished the last one like on the 30th. And I didn't put into Goodreads that I finished it on the 30th. So it's probably going to think that I finished it. I actually put it in yesterday. So it's going to think that I finished it today. That's fine. It'll go towards wonkily towards my goal for this year. I think this year I'm going to put my goal at 23 books, 23 for 2023. I saw someone else do that. I am being a copycat. Um, and part of the reason why I'm doing that is because I think that's a good number to start at for the year. Um, it makes sense. 23 books for 2023. If I read more, yay me. Um, just also wanted to show you some of the books that are on my shelf that I am planning on reading. <laughs> Ooh, I'm really close to the camera. Thought I'd show you some of the books that are on my shelf that I am planning on reading. Um, I don't know when I'm going to get to all of these. And I'm always accumulating more books. I have tons of books in storage. That is just my life. But these are ones that are more recent. Some of them or most of them are more recent within like the last six months that I've purchased. So I have some. A couple of these are my husband's as well. So this is the bookshelf in... The little sitting nook. This is one of them. I am going to add some bookshelves to my guest room. I'm not going to pan down to that bottom row because that's just a bunch of magazines that still have not been put away. It'll be 2024 before I do. But anyway, so these are just some books that I have on deck to read. I have taken the dust jacket off of a few of them because I want wanted the colors of the books as opposed to whatever dust jacket they came with. I'm not a dust jacket fan because 
when I'm reading books, a lot of the times the dust jacket just ends up getting like all messed up or whatever anyway. You know, I get food on it or whatever because I can be messy sometimes. <laughs> I try not to. I try to be one of those polished, pulled together girls. And sometimes I am impeccably so and sometimes I totally fall short. Like, if you give me any popcorn, it's a wrap. It's going to end up everywhere. Sorry, not sorry. But anyway, I will just kind of scan over these so that you can get a general idea of the fact that I have no rhyme or reason when it comes to the books that I read. <laughs> so this one, the Mitch album book, is that's my husband's book. He is a Mitch album fan and he's read most of his books. And for Christmas, if he hasn't read a Mitch album book, I typically will buy it for him, either for Christmas or his birthday, because he likes Mitch album. So that's his book. But the Michael Pollan book, This Is Your Mind on Plants, I have not read that. Lions of Fifth Avenue, it's about a, it's about the New York City Library. Um, there's The Vanishing Half, which I really want to read because I think it's about two sisters. One passes for white and one doesn't. Apparently it's really good. Cloud Cuckoo Land, I have not started yet and I've had for a long time. And then, as you can see there, so forth and so forth, so on and so forth. Now, I have read Daisy Jones and the Six, and I think I'm going to do like a 60-second um, uh, review of that. The Will Smith book is my husband's as well, but I'm going to read that because I hear it, nothing but great things about it. Um, I have this book, 99% Invisible City. I don't think it's really a book that you sit and read. It's more of a book that just has a lot of information in it and you can kind of skim it at will. Um, Cast, which is apparently really good and it talks about like the hierarchy of, um, you know, this the invisible caste system that we have in this country and why some people are more oppressed than others. So I want to get into that. A Little Life. Now, this book right here has been all over the internet, and apparently, like, this is the saddest book you'll ever read. It is just heartbreaking, and um, I purchased it knowing full well that it it was a at the right, it's going to be an at the right time, at the right place type of book. Starting off the new year, I decided to start it off with Hail Mary because people said that it was funny and witty and different. I want something really upbeat going into the new year, but at some point... I will tuck into this and I'll let y'all know. But everybody that reads this loves it or hates it viscerally. <laughs> and when I say hates it, they loved it so much, but they hated the subject matter and they cried. One girl just lost it completely on camera. So um, we will see. I've got a Joan Didion book here. Um, and I'm, I'm very interested in Joan Didion. I have a couple of her books. And I watched the documentary on her life. And so I find her very interesting. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, same author that wrote Daisy Jones and the Six. Apparently this book is also phenomenal. So um, I will eventually get to that too. Uh, Tiny Beautiful Things by Cheryl Strait. I didn't know she had a podcast, but apparently she did. And that's the book from the podcast. I still need to get into this how to read a book. I actually started it and it's a little boring at the beginning, but I'm gonna I'm get there. I'm gonna I'm read it because I, I feel like if I give it more of a chance, it'll eventually help me with um, how I read. Um, and then there's Educated by Tara Westover, which I've actually had for a while. Effortless back there in the back, the same author that wrote Essentialism, um, as you can see, I read fiction and nonfiction. Um, my favorite genre would probably be nonfiction biography. Biographies are probably my favorite genre, but I do like historical fiction too. But I do like a good, just like motivational book as well. So yeah. And then I have the Daily Stoic, which I probably should start to pull this out and put it on my nightstand because I said I was going to start it. Um, on the first and of course it's two days later three days later but um good thing i came over here to show you guys this that is my <laughs> bookshelf so far and there are more books scattered around the house that i didn't show you because in my life it has always been this way there are books everywhere my dad built a library um a very small library in our house when i was a little kid that literally had floor to ceiling books my whole family were readers so yeah, 
in my house, you're liable to see just books everywhere. And I'm no respecter of books, coffee table books, random novels, <laughs> you name it, magazines. I'm even doing a reading challenge this year with the fam. I think it's gonna be great. So that's it for this video. I somehow didn't end the video. I do that sometimes, you guys. Charge it to my head and not to my heart. But that's it for this video. It was a little long and a little rambly, but I really am enjoying just kind of talking to you guys and um, revealing a little bit more of myself. Be sure to sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already. I will leave the information in the description box. And I will see you in the next video. Loving you and leaving you. Take care. <laughs> Bye.